I am Fletcher Cox, a visiting researcher at the Department of Peace and Conflict Research and a research fellow at the Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance. Um, while I'm here on a sabbatical fellowship from William Jewell College in the US where I'm an associate professor of political science. The project I'm focused on this year is titled, How Does Democracy Assistance Influence Patterns of political violence. Electoral processes, competitions for political power, have the potential to trigger the escalation of political violence. This risk holds for established and transitioning democracies alike. As we've seen in cases as diverse as Ethiopia and Kenya, Nepal and Myanmar, Bolivia and Brazil, to quite recently the US on January 6, 2021. A long-standing research finding shows that electoral processes can create windows of vulnerability. When electoral processes uh, entrench intergroup fears, threaten minority groups, or create incentives for the use of violence to capture state power, political competition can escalate to outbreaks of political violence. Over the very near horizon into 2023 and 2024, multiple upcoming elections will occur in countries characterized by electoral malpractices, such as the nefarious influence of money, control or restrictions over the media, conditions of coercion and corruption, and even new threats, such as cyber attacks, foreign influence, and extremist social media campaigns. All of these, we know, are major risks for the escalation of political violence. While there is an increasing understanding of the ways election-related violence can be anticipated, research has focused less specifically on how international organizations respond to crises after major risks uh, are identified. We are currently in an era of kind of unprecedented proliferation of risk assessment methods, many of them happening here at DPCR. The Uppsala Conflict Data Program's georeferenced event data set um, there's also a new deadly electoral conflict data set, as well as a way to predict violence through the Violence Early Warning System, or the VIEWS program. All of these data sets are field leading and help us see risks better than ever before. However, with incredible momentum in risk assessment, there's still a lingering concern around the so-called warning response problem. So what does this mean? Even if we gather highly accurate information about the risk of violence in specific locations, this does not necessarily ensure it will trigger action that effects, effectively reduces risk and prevents negative outcomes. Very specifically, my research aims to deepen our understanding of the warning response problem within the field of democracy assistance asking under what conditions does accurate risk assessment succeed in triggering effective international responses to crises of democratization. So what methods can be used to address this question? Uh, my work uses what's called a nested analysis approach or mixed methods, where a statistical investigation then sets the scene for case selection that's used for comparative analysis. So in this particular study, Kenya, Nepal, and Kyrgyzstan stunned out as critical cases. They all have consistent, long-running democracy assistance and electoral support programs, yet variable patterns of political violence. So this allows me to conduct a deep historical research on the cases, as well as interviews with practitioners working in the field of democracy, electoral, uh, democracy assistance to try to reduce risks under increasingly complicated scenarios that include high risk of political violence during an electoral cycle. Thank you for listening to a brief overview of my ongoing research at the Department of Peace and Conflict Research. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out.